Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us here for Crime 2 News 10 at 10, where we give you more news in less time. I'm Whitney Ward in for Mark tonight. Let's get started. A Spokane man was forced to pay $1,000 to get his stolen motorcycle released from a tow yard. Then 36 hours later, it was stolen again. That victim has a warning for other motorcycle owners in the area. Crime 2's Kyle Simchuk is joining us now live in the newsroom with his story. Kyle. Well, after the first theft, Billy Hall bought a security chain specifically designed to protect motorcycles. It's nearly impossible to break with bolt cutters, but thieves seem to have no issue. Hall says the thefts have cost him more than $1,000, money his family and pregnant girlfriend could really use right now. Billy Hall, and he'll tell you this motorcycle isn't just some dust-collecting toy. It's a hobby and his ride to work each morning had my helmet and everything in hand and said, where's my bike? Hall's bike was stolen earlier this month from his apartment parking lot on Upriver Drive. Five days later, uh, a detective for the highway patrol called me and they uh, recovered it in Wenatchee. Hall had to take time off work, rent a trailer and borrow a truck to drive all the way to a Wenatchee tow yard. They had his bike and also a bill. I'm surprised that I'm liable for the impound fee. I actually paid $1,000 to buy my own motorcycle back from an impound fee because someone stole it. The bike had been painted. It was pearlescent purple and blue, the whole thing, motor included. And the crooks even made their own key. Yeah, the key was now a screwdriver. Hall returned to Spokane with his bike and a new heavy-duty lock. He chained it to this pole. Then, just 36 hours later, the morning after Not Father's Day... My neighbor uh, woke me up pounding on the wall screaming, that someone's stealing your bike, I came running out and they weren't nowhere to be seen. For the second time this month, his bike is missing. The criminal element can target us and we pay the price. To make matters worse, Hall planned to sell the motorcycle after this riding season to have a little extra cash for his growing family. This was gonna be my last riding season and I was gonna sell it and uh, a good chunk of that was gonna go to buy her a ring. And then the other chunk was to save for the baby that's on the way, she's uh, 15 weeks Monday. Spokane police tell Krem 2 they are investigating the thefts. Hall has some advice for other riders. Yeah, if you own a motorcycle, do more than lock it and chain it. Do more than that because if it, these people that pray at the night, they will find it. And according to data from Spokane Police, property crime around the city is up nearly 30 percent compared to this time last year. In the newsroom, Kyle Simcha, Krem 2 News. Wow. Kyle, thank you very much. Well, tonight, the Coeur d'Alene City Council voted in favor of replacing the half Iron Man with a full Iron Man triathlon by next year. So that decision passed with a vote of five to one with council member Dan Gukin objecting, criticizing the event as a quote, $650 million international cooperation owned by the Chinese. Now the course for the full triathlon would remain the same, but then athletes would run the course essentially twice. The event, of course, would be much longer than the half Ironman. Happening tomorrow, Spokane International Airport will have a full-scale emergency exercise, and the goal is to give the airport's first responders an opportunity to practice their emergency response plan. They'll get hands-on experience with different simulated injuries or emergency situations. Now to Night Beat with a quick look at the day's top stories. This afternoon, Riley Hillstad was found guilty of second-degree murder, along with five other charges in connection to the murder of Newport teenager Jason Fox. Fox was found dead in an isolated area near Newport in October of 2020. Court documents say his body was found buried three to four feet underground with his hands tied behind his back. Hillstad has been described in court documents as the ringleader in the murder. He'll be sentenced in July. In the meantime, another man, Claude Merritt, has also been found guilty in Fox's death. Two other suspects are still waiting to stand trial. Very frustrated especially since they only stole a little comment box. So all this damage is for nothing, literally for nothing. So it's, it's gonna cost a lot of money for us to get our store back to normal. Spokane police looking for a driver that crashed a Jeep through the doors of a Spokane business early this morning in a burglary attempt. Officers responded to an alarm at Laundry Land on West Wellesley to find the business badly damaged. Surveillance video from inside the building shows the Jeep crashing into the building before a man got out, looked around for a bit, then took a, a comment box and got back in and drove away. A manager for Laundryland says that they will obviously have to pay a lot to get it back. If you do have information, you're asked to please call Crime Check at the number at the bottom of your screen. 
We have a major traffic alert to tell you about tonight. Today, US 195 will be closed for concrete panel replacements. The work begins now on a 10 mile stretch between the Cashup Flats Way Station and the State Route 271 interchange. Traffic will be reduced to one lane. The work will last for three days, then start up again next Monday. And drivers who were hoping to use maybe State Route 27 as an alternate route between Spokane and Pullman, well, they can also expect delays. That's because of an ongoing chip sealing project. That was your night beat. If you'd like to learn more about any of those stories, just text the word night to 509-448-2000. We'll send them all right to your phone. All right, the good news is it was officially the first day of summer and it was beautiful. Clear skies, warmer temperatures than we've seen all year long. Chief Meteorologist Jeremy Lagu is out there right now on what is now officially our first beautiful summer evening. Oh, and, and boy, is it nice. It is better than I thought it would be, and I knew what the forecast was. We'll put it that way. Temperatures right now sit in the upper 60s. Keep in mind, yesterday I was saying 67 feels hot, and I'm here to tell you 67 after the sun goes down feels wonderful. Tonight we drop down into the 50s, even if barely, but basically our morning low temperature arrives right in that first hour of the day. So we start the day around 57. Keep in mind, the sun comes up at 451 AM tomorrow and climbs. By the middle of the day, we are in the mid 70s and likely hitting 80 for the first time this year in much of eastern Washington. Up near 90 out in central Washington and mid to upper 70s for North Idaho. It's going to be beautiful. We take a bit of a dip Thursday and then warm back up. Got the details coming up. All right, Jeremy, thank you very much. And turning now to national news today, the House Select Committee held its fourth hearing looking into the Capitol attack. Donald Trump did not care about the threats of violence. He did not condemn them. He made no effort to stop them. The House Select Committee investigating that attack says pressuring local officials was a fundamental part of attempting to overturn the 2020 election. Rusty Bowers was the Republican Speaker of the Arizona House. He told the panel today that Trump's attorney, Rudy Giuliani, could not present him any proof of voter fraud, but still wanted him to decertify the state's electors. In the meantime, in Georgia, President Trump at the time called various officials, hoping they would change the results in his favor. The next hearing is this coming Thursday, when the committee will detail President Trump's efforts to pressure his own Justice Department into spreading his false claims about the election. And in other national news, testimony from the director of the Texas Department of Public Safety is now sparking new outrage over law enforcement's response to last month's mass shooting at a Uvalde, Texas elementary school, where 19 children and two teachers were killed. There's compelling evidence that the law enforcement response to the attack at Robb Elementary was an abject failure and antithetical to everything we've learned over the last two decades since the Columbine massacre. Today, the public safety chief told a Texas state Senate hearing that officers waited for more than an hour for a key, even though the classroom door wasn't locked. He placed the blame squarely on decisions made by the Uvalde School District Police Chief Pete Arredondo. That was Creme 2 News 10 at 10, where you get more news in less time. But don't go to bed just yet. Coming up after the break, a new initiative to help encourage kids here to play more basketball. We're back in 90 seconds. you later this week. This was a case that forever changed Spokane. Candy Rogers was kidnapped and killed back in 1959. The murder case went unsolved for more than 60 years until, a, until it was late last year when Spokane police announced new DNA technology led them to the killer. And it turns out John Ray Hoff's own daughter is the one who helped crack the case. She has never agreed to an interview before until now. You know, you have to get to that point where you can heal and you can realize it wasn't me. I'm so sorry. I carry great feeling about what he did to that family. You know, that will not change, but I can only offer them and let them know how I feel. That it wasn't my guilt, it was his, but I still will never, I don't think, get over that part a little bit. Kathy says she's now speaking out to make sure that Candy Rogers is never forgotten. She's actually become friends with Candy's extended family and together they are now fighting to have the playground at AM Cannon Park in West Central Spokane named in Candy's honor. So make sure to join us for a Creme 2 special report that's coming up Thursday on Creme 2 News at 6. We're back after a quick break.
Storm Tracker 2's Jeremy Lagoo is taking the Storm Tracker out for a joy ride. No, I'm not. I'm taking the Storm Tracker to different microclimates around the region. I'll show you the why behind the weather where you live. The Creme 2 Storm Tracker, sponsored by Finlay Jeep. When you've been seriously injured, choosing the right legal team is the most important decision you'll make. Craig Swap & Associates is a top personal injury law firm for one reason. We win. If you or a loved one has been seriously injured, our team of winning attorneys is here for you. We'll review your case for free and start working immediately to win the compensation you deserve. Craig Swap & Associates, one call, that's all. What makes Camus Rewards at Northern Quest the best? Easy, it's not just for gaming. Earn points everywhere, like Maslow's Steakhouse and Epic Sports Bar. Or redeem them everywhere, for spa days at La Rive, shopping at Windfall, fuel at Kalispell Chevron's, you name it. No one does rewards quite like this. Plus, sign up now and you could win up to $2,022 in reward play instantly. Camus Rewards at Northern Quest. Yes, the best. Krem 2's Jeremy Lagoo is taking the Storm Tracker out for a joy ride. No, I'm not. I'm taking the Storm Tracker to different microclimates around the region. I'll show you the why behind the weather where you live. The Krem 2 Storm Tracker, sponsored by Finlay Jeep. Welcome back. We have nationally recognized collegiate basketball teams. We host state high school tournaments. But HoopFest organizers say we need to do more to get younger kids involved in the thing that makes Spokane Hooptown USA. Earlier today, basketball influencers came together to share the launch of a new league focused on Spokane's youth. Krem 2's Janelle Finch tells us how the league is making basketball more accessible for more kids. To expand on Spokane's Hooptown USA brand, local basketball officials say that they need to focus on reclaiming youth participation. Today, collegiate coaches, school officials, and HoopFest executive director Riley Stockton announced Hooptown Youth League LLC. Through this new league, a child's socioeconomic status, their skill level, or their ability to find a team will not matter. But what will matter is whether or not they love to play the game. And if they do, then they're welcome to register. Hooptown Youth League LLC will give more kids a chance to play basketball. To do this, officials say the league will bring down barriers to access. This is just kind of reimagining our youth programming. This includes having kids play in school gyms to limit transportation needs, offering reduced costs to make it easier on parents, and allowing players to register as individuals so they don't need to worry about making a team. HoopFest Executive Director Riley Stockton says over the last 10 to 12 years, youth participation and teams have declined. And to round out Spokane's Hooptown USA brand, more focus needs to be put on the success of kids. With all the success from high school and colleges, we needed to grow the youth program and do a change because it just wasn't working the way that we have it right now. He says the rise in entertainment and two years with reduced or no sports contributed to the decline, which leads to a league designed for Spokane's youth. All the best life lessons I've learned um, throughout my years um, have been through sports. Um, you know, how to win, how to lose. So if we can do a little bit to have more kids out there and playing and give access to people that maybe don't always have the access, that's huge for us. Other panelists say they hope the league will encourage more female basketball players. According to HoopFest, there are no third, fourth, fifth, or sixth grade girls teams participating in Spokane club basketball. The league will not eliminate high school programs and the Spokane Youth Sports High School Rec League. Grade school kids can still play for coach or club organized teams in tournaments throughout the year. Hooptown says sponsors have provided $100,000 to kickstart the league. Stockton says there is still work to be done, like finding reps and coaches, possibly implementing a scholarship program, and finalizing a budget. But the program is set to launch this coming fall, with registration beginning in early September. In Spokane, Janelle Finch, Creme 2 News. And if you remember the story that we brought you at the end of last night's newscast, as HoopFest weekend approaches, people will have the opportunity to find one of 25 mini basketballs hidden across the Inland Northwest. Each one is worth between $25 and $1,500. Well, there's already been a winner, at least one. The first ball was placed in Spokane Riverfront Park this morning, and it was found in just two minutes. Then a family in Wenatchee found the next ball, but the fun has just started, so make sure to keep an eye out for any tiny basketballs that you see, because you might just win some cold hard cash. Oh man, I worked all day, but I, I'll admit I didn't check Instagram. 
But if you want to get outside and check for basketballs, I've got a great forecast for you. Get this today. Today we topped out right about where we should be this time of year. Coming up, we're talking everything from a scorcher to a bit of a cool down and uh, some real heat that's on the way.